Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk UK, and today I want to talk to you about AppVeyor. And AppVeyor, as you can see up here, is a continuous integration solution for Windows. Okay, what does that mean? What problem is this solving? So uh, the problem it's solving for me is that I can automate my builds and also my deployments of my website. So I've got my website, CodeShare.co.uk, for those who aren't familiar with it. And this website, it's looking a bit dated. I'm going to update the theme soon. Anyway, I can't bother to keep going onto the server to keep putting a manual build up onto the server. With zip, like you know, you do a build in Visual Studio, you produce a, uh, you do publish, you produce a zip file, you go on RDP, you paste it over. You know, that's the manual way. I've done a post or a video about doing it the old manual way. I don't do that anymore on uh, CodeShare. I'm pleased to say, I use AppVeya. So what AppVeya lets you do is it automatically runs the build for you. So same as what Visual, uh, Visual Studio does. So once you choose to publish, it will build it for you, create a zip file, and it will use web deploy if you want. And it's got other ways of doing things, but I've got it set up to use web deploy to push that build over to the live server or the UAT server or wherever I want it to. And then it just replaces that build. And the other good thing about it is it keeps the history of them. So if you need to roll back, you can. So let's have a look. So at the moment, I've got all these different builds here. And so if we go to code share and we go to history, we can see all of these builds. And if I wanted to, say if something went wrong on my latest build, I can deploy back. Uh, roll back but the other good thing about it is that I've got it set up to be triggered by a check-in well a commit that was pushed in github so I use github for the source control of my website I've got a private repo for get uh, code share on github and so when I make a change to it so let's just do a change as a demonstration here so maybe we'll put something in the base and we'll just put a little comment at the bottom here in the body, we'll just do uh, testing out app via. So I'll save that. Now, as I've got Visual Studio 2017 and I've got the tools installed, I can actually uh, commit my changes for Git on here. So just put testing app via. So you can do it with the command line, pushing it to get, you know. So this will uh, commit those changes to my local repo, and then I can do sync to then push it up to the server. So I'm not here to teach you about GitHub. So that's a separate thing, so I've got my GitHub repo. Now, before I knew about this, I used to think, well, how did I do this? How did I use GitHub, and how does it pick up the latest changes? Does it just, like, point to the web folder or something and not actually use compiled files as it has it all work and it doesn't work like that it actually does a proper build for you and it does it as if you were doing a deployment anyway so that's happened and because that's happened let's go back to app Vea. it's picked up a change it's seen that we've said testing it we've got a commit that said testing app Vea. so what it's going to do is going to clone my project uh, from github and it's going to bring those changes down. It's going to get all of the um, the files that it needs. It's going to get everything from uh, the place, or what's it called, NuGet Package Manager. It's going to get all of the packages that I need. It's going to run a build. It's going to run all of my tests, because obviously I've got loads of tests. I haven't really. It's a personal project, so you don't usually have all these tests on personal projects. But it's good practice to have a load of tests anyway. So if it... What can happen is if the tests fail, then it will say, well, I'm not deploying it. Your tests failed. Rubbish. But anyway, so this is now caching the packages. It's got all the build cache. So what you do is you stay on this screen and you can see it happening. And it takes a few minutes for it to work. Um, but it's busy working away in the background while I can go off and get a coffee. And uh, I've tweeted about it recently where I've been on the train. I had an idea. And the idea was I wanted to... Um, on my blog page or my search page. Say if you're at the bottom and you click next, 
what I had it doing was it would just change the results using Ajax, nice, but it wouldn't go to the top. So now I've got it on the success event, you change the results and it goes up to the top. So that was what I had the idea of doing while I was on the train and I was able to make that code change, test it out locally, happy with that, committed it to GitHub, pushed it up to uh, master and then AppVeyor took it over from there. So I just pressed push just as I was having to put my stuff away in my bag again to get off the train and as I walked the 10 minute walk to work, I got into work, I checked it and it was all deployed. Um, so all I had to do was just check it into GitHub. So I think it's really useful. Uh, so I love doing it. So now it's about it's about um, deploying often. It's about not being afraid to redeploy. I mean, how many people do you know or how many of you have already done it yourself where you change files on the live server? You like manually go on and edit the files. You edit in the config file or something like that. Don't tell me you haven't done it because I bet you have. Um, you know, people do do these things, but it's where mistakes can creep in. It's where you can edit something on the live config file, but then later you need to redeploy for some sort of reason where you didn't bring those changes down. So it's the wrong way around. You shouldn't be bringing changes down from live down to local. You should be only publishing what you've got locally up to live. So that's what I do. Um, let's have a look how this is getting on. So how long has it taken so far? So it's taken three minutes, five seconds so far. So it does take a while. That's one thing I will say. Um, I think it does take a while to actually do it. But now we've moved on to the next step and then we'll start seeing all these um, messages coming up. So this is what it's doing as it's doing its build. So it looks like it's not far off now. Oh, oh what am I doing? So, yeah, this will be near enough getting ready to do the publish now. When I start seeing these messages, I know that it's going to happen soon. So, yeah, it's getting ready and it's going to push those up to the live server. Now, the reason it knows it's a live server is because in my project, I've got um, a folder. So, with that beta, you get a YML file that you edit. And this YML file has got the settings that I want to say. So... I've configured it to say every time you do a new build, um, the version number, just add the build number on the end. I've told it to use the live configuration that I've got set up in um, Visual Studio, which you would use for normal publishing anyway, even if you're doing it the manual way. Um, I'm telling it to cache the packages. I'm saying before you do a build, do a new git restore. Um, publish WAP true, I can't remember what that is. If you need to know about how you get set up with this, I've got a blog post about it on my blog. If you go to codeshare.co.uk and you search for app veyor. There we go. So my friend Stephen Harland from Scotland, he wrote this for me. Um, I say my friend, I know him from the internet. Uh, he's in the Umbraco community, so I class him as a friend. Anyway, he's wrote this brilliant post. I followed this post and that's how I got set up. It was so good, so detailed. I'm sorry, I'm just racing through it, but it's that one. How to set up continuous deployment for MVC and Umbraco using AppVeyor. It's not Umbraco specific, it's any project really. So that's the post. Look, we've gone green over here, so that means it's done. So it's done the deployment to live. Let's just go back to the YML file a minute. And I just want to show you. So the environment that I want to deploy to is the live environment. And the name of that environment is live.codeshare.co.uk. So when I want to switch these, I've set it up, I've set one up for live and one for UAT. So if I want to do some changes, I don't want to go to live yet, but when I commit them to GitHub, I do want to see them, maybe so I can use it on my phone or you know I want it to push up to my test server and test site, I can just change that to UAT and that to UAT, and it's configured then to point it to the other site. So at the minute, I'm quite happy to, for any of my changes to go up to live. So let's have a look on the live site and see what's happening there. And let, also, let's just see how long did that take? It took five minutes, which isn't bad. I mean, five minutes of me not doing anything. I've just been waffling on, uh, which is a lot quicker than doing it using RDP. 
So what we're doing, oh yeah, let's go to the home page. Let's inspect the home page when it loads up because obviously it will take a, a few seconds to load because it's the first load after I've changed the build, changed the config file. Anyway, so view source. And what we'll see at the bottom of here, testing out at Vaya. So that change that I committed to GitHub automatically got pushed up um, using app there. So I really like it, it's really useful and I'm going to carry on using it all the time. It's free for um, open source projects so if you've got a NuGet library, that's the other good thing as well. I've got a NuGet library so if I go to uh, projects, uh, we've got my smaller images or password generator, that one died at the minute but uh, like smaller images I can see I, it will create artifacts for me and one of the artifacts is a NuGet uh, package. So I've got it with those commands, you know, the app via YML file. I've got it to create me a NuGet package and I push that NuGet package over to NuGet and it's, it's just so useful, it's really good. So now um, if I want, I can create NuGet packages, no problem. I can even do private ones because I've got, the, I've got a paid account, I can do the private ones. But if you're open source, yeah, it's free for you. So I, I like that side of it. It is paid for. Um, let's have a look at the pricing. So when you look at the pricing, just think how much time it's going to save you. So if it's personal project, it's $29 a month. You probably don't want that if you're working for a web development company. You'll probably go up to one of these steps up here, pro or premium. It's up to you. I'm not trying to get sell it to you at all. I just wanted to talk to you about it. So anyway, this is AppVeyer and I love it. So check it out. If you like it, brilliant. Let me know. Put it in the comments. Uh, I hope you do, you know, get to use it. And um, yeah, I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please click on like, subscribe to my channel and tell your friends and share, etc., etc. And I'll do some more videos for you soon. All right, thanks for watching, bye.